In the last video, we talked about allosteric regulation and allosteric enzymes. In this video, I want to give an example of an allosteric enzyme, which is ATCase, which is short for aspartate transcarbamylase. This enzyme catalyzes uh, the production of n carbamyl aspartate and HPO42 negative from uh, its, its substrate, aspartate, and carbamyl phosphate, which is this thing I've drawn here. Okay, so why do we care about this reaction? Well, the reason we care about it is because it's, it's catalyzed by an allosteric enzyme. Okay, and um, in addition, um, we're going to talk about how this enzyme is regulated. Okay, so why is this reaction particularly important? Well, this is the this reaction here that is catalyzed by ATCase is the first reaction, the first step in a pathway. Um, dedicated to the production oops, production of pyrimidine nucleotides. Oops, not pyrimidine, pyrimidine nucleotides. Okay, and specifically, the specific end product is a particular pyrimidine nucleotide which is CTP. So the end product is CTP, okay, which is a pyrimidine nucleotide. So why is this important? Well, in the last video we talked about how we would expect uh, enzymes to be regulated if one of the things was if they are involved in the first, if they catalyze the first step that's dedicated to a particular pathway. Well, ATCA is catalyzed the first step uh, of a pathway that creates an end product CTP, right? So we want to make sure that we only have this enzyme active when we want to create CTP, okay? In addition, if there's already CTP around, we don't want this enzyme to be active, right? What's the point of making CTP if we already have some? Which brings me to this idea of feedback inhibition, which you're probably already familiar with, okay? So feedback inhibition, okay, or negative feedback, okay? negative feedback is the whole idea that the end product of a pathway right will inhibit whatever creates it right so it's it's the whole idea here is that ATCase is inhibited by its end product CTP which basically if there's a bunch of CTP around it'll allosterically inhibit ATCase from working because we don't want it to be dedicated to making more CTP if we already have some okay which brings me to this idea here which I'll elaborate a little bit more in just a moment. So the allosteric effectors for ATCase, well the first one is aspartate. Aspartate, why is it an allosteric effector for ATCase? Well, it's a substrate, okay? Now, I thought allosteric effectors had to be activators or inhibitors. Well, how can they be substrates? Which is this question here. How can a substrate be an allosteric effector? Well, if you recall um, what I'm going to write here, this substrate binds cooperatively. Right? If you recall, that's what hemoglobin and oxygen did, right? So oxygen was an allosteric effector of hemoglobin because it would bind at one location and the affinity at the other subunits would increase for oxygen. So same idea here with aspartate. Aspartate is a substrate for ATCase and it actually binds to ATCase co cooperatively. So once one aspartate binds, and the others will want the other subunits on ATCase will have a higher affinity for those uh, aspartates. Okay, so now I want to talk about um, CTP or citidine triphosphate, which is a particular pyrimidine nucleotide. It's an allosteric inhibitor. Why? Well, we mentioned it over here. It's an end product of the pathway. Okay, so it's an end product. So end products, right, will inhibit further production. This is the idea that um, that this whole pathway is dedicated to making CTP, right? So if there's already CTP around, right, it'll inhibit ATCase from working. This is the simple idea that don't make more, don't make more CTP if there's plenty around.
there's already plenty around. Okay, so cytidine triphosphate CCP is an allosteric inhibitor of ATCase. Okay, now the third thing, the third allosteric effector here is adenosine triphosphate, which is ATP. So ATP is an allosteric activator. Well, why would we have ATP as an allosteric activator? Well, um, ATP actually there's 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 two things here, um, two reasons why it actually activates it. The first one is that ATP, uh, lots of ATP indicates it indicates a high amount of energy, right? And um, CTP and ATP, they're both nucleotides, and nucleotides are used to make nucleic acids like um, DNA or RNA. And so, um, so in order to have those processes even occur, you need energy. So lots of energy is required in order to, to you know, synthesize nu nucleic acids from nucleotides. So it would make sense that um, a high energy would sort of support this idea of creating nucleotides to make, um, to make nucleic acids. Okay, but the, the the other idea is a little bit clearer to kind of see because high energy is not like the most distinctive reason why ATP would activate um, ATCase. The other reason is that lots of AD, ATP indicates lots of purines because ATP is a purine nucleotide. Okay, so if there's lots of purine nucleotides, right? For for the production of DNA and RNA, you need to have purines and pyrimidines, and you need to have them in equal amounts, right? Because it, when when in DNA, when you or RNA, um, purines and pyrimidines uh, make up the hydro, uh, hydrogen bound um, in those, uh, or specifically DNA at least, double stranded DNA. You need one purine for every pyrimidine that you have. So if you have a lot of purines, then you need to make sure that you make enough pyrimidines to balance things out. Okay, so so here if we have lots of purine nucleotides, that means we need to make pyrimidine nucleotides to even things out. Right? And then basically we need, basically the whole idea is that we need to have um, we need equal amounts of purines and pyrimidines. Okay, so lots of ATP indicates lots of purines. If we have a lot of purines, we need to make sure that the purine and pyrimidine sort of amounts are balanced out. So lots of ATP would activate ATCase to make CTP, which is a pyrimidine, so that we have then an equal number of pyrimidines and purines. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So, so knowing all that, let's think about about this here, right? If this if this is um, the the graph of velocity over substrate concentration for um, for an allosteric enzyme, specifically ATCase, if you think about this white line here that I've drawn here, it's the control with no inhibitor, no inactivate, no activator. Notice what's the shape of that? If you recall, that is a sigmoid shape, right? Which is characteristic of an allosteric enzyme. That's something to keep in mind. Now notice this red line here would be it's shifted to the left which means that it'll have a higher velocity at a lower substrate concentration. And that's something we went over in the other video. I won't elaborate too much on it here. But I, what I want to point out is that the red line is with the activator, right? So if it's with the activator, what is the activator in this case? the activator is ATP so this red line here is with ATP right the activator um, I'll put a little plus sign here to, to indicate activator and the blue line is with the inhibitor right Oops, the inhibitor okay or a little negative sign there and the inhibitor is why did I write negative? I, want, I was thinking negative feedback. Excuse me. The inhibitor is, of course, CTP. Okay, so this here would be with the inhibitor, which is CTP. 
Okay. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make too much sense, uh, there's I've elaborated on it in the previous video, so check that video out. Okay. So I mentioned purines and pyrimidines just to kind of refresh, or maybe I should have said this earlier, but um, uh, if you don't, in a simple way to remember the purines and the pyrimidines is to remember that the purines are pure as gold. So A and G are the purines, which are um, adenine. The nitrogenous base is adenine and guanine, right? Those are the things that make up ATP and GTP, right? Um, so th those these nitrogenous bases are the purine um, nitrogenous bases that that you know, make up these purine nucleotides, pure as gold. So per, the pyrimidine nucleotides, the way I remember that is pyramids, right? <laughs> pyramids have sharp edges. Notice how they have like these little straight edges like this. So sharp edges, what do they do? Sharp edges, they cut. So the sharp edges cut, C-U-T, those are the things that are the pyrimidine nucleotides. So that would be cytosine, the nitrogenous bases, cytosine, uracil, and thymine. Right, they make up the nucleotides CTP, UTP, and TTP. Assuming these are all tri triphosphates. Anyway, though, um, this is sort of a refresher if you didn't already know. But this is something to bear in mind as far as um, you know being useful to how how you can um, remember what goes on with these allosteric effectors. So I hope that video was helpful. I'll see you next time.